Good morning to you. Uh, we're back on the uh, on the barrel heater heat in the greenhouse situation here. You'll see I have an old uh, uh, oh boy, what's the name? An old radiator here uh, and a blower fan and a roll of copper. So you can imagine what I'm doing. Uh, what I'm finding with my barrel heater is. Uh, I cannot seem to get enough airflow through my heat exchanger. Uh, right now it's forced air, it's blowing great heat. Uh, it does vary with the fire. Um, so when I shovel more coal onto the fire, I'm experiencing a, a, a temperature drop in the greenhouse, which is something that the plants will not forgive very easily. So I need to come up with a way that extracts more heat from the uh, from the barrel heater that isn't as how would you put it fluctuant it would have to be a little more stable so what I'm doing I'm gonna leave the air system in there um, I still haven't got a new blower for it since my blower failed so I do have a water heating system in there I have a coil in the flue which does heat the water uh, but it's more of a residual heat. It just heats up the water in the bucket and the bucket just kind of sheds its heat. However, I still need something a little bit more effective, especially when the temperatures drop into the double digits, which we very well could experience in the springtime. So what I have is this old core, uh, actually from my track hoe, and it's off the air conditioning. It's been flushed. Um, and I have tested this thing. Uh, it, it leaked with Freon, but it didn't leak with water. So um, basically, my water comes in here, and the, this type of uh, of core, it actually heats up this section, and then it goes over here, heats up this section, and then it comes over here, does this section, and then does this section. So by the time the 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 entrance is generally considerably hotter than the outlet. So what I need to do is get my water even hotter. Uh, the, the system I have in there now is only about a five degree climb in and out, which works great for that system. However, this system, I'm gonna have to have it a lot hotter. And every time it goes into the system, it's gonna have to get very hot, almost, almost steam. Even if I had steam, that would work. Um, it's a non-pressurized system, so I don't have to worry about um, any injuries related to steam for the most part are pressurizing it anyway it's going to be an open-ended circuit so basically what we'll have is we'll have our greenhouse or in our greenhouse we'll have our pond pump which pumps from a pail through this copper winding which will be installed inside the uh, burn chamber of the barrel heater and from here it will be plumbed back into the sh into the greenhouse sorry into this port here and uh, this will stand up and it'll come into this port the fan will be mounted to the back side and uh, it will just discharge out this pipe here and drain back down into the bucket uh, then it will get recirculated with the pump so that the cooling process will protect the pump from overheating of course I have used this radiator in the past and it does do a real good job of cooling down it takes a little while for it to warm up um, but we're gonna build a or we're hoping to build a box to seal this fan or this dual fan this window fan we'll mount this you know and then we'll seal it up so that all the air from the fan goes through the radiator Otherwise, it'll just kind of pick on one area there, I think, and uh, won't completely cool that radiator down. So, that is today's project. We'll see what we can get going with it. Um, if uh, anyone was watching my distiller progress from yesterday, um, that project is not turning out the way I want it to. It's not cost effective at this point, and I do have other ideas for it. Um, we'll, we'll uh, it's basically going to require uh, more of a 
enclosure that will cool down the uh, the steam a little bit better so uh, I've kind of put the brakes on that one because this one here's kind of been nagging at me so uh, this is what we're gonna tackle today and I'll give updates here as we go along um, as for the results what I'd expect of this um, if I can if I can get a good heat transfer under this copper which I'm sure I will be able to um, I would expect that this here is going to make a fair difference in the greenhouse once again we do not have a cold air return so this will just circulate the air in the greenhouse that's available but we're not forcing air into the greenhouse we're taking air from the greenhouse and just moving it around so we're not going to run into that ventilation issue um, back to that forced air idea on the on the existing system in there um, it's basically needs a fan that's that's capable of a little bit more push I made a makeshift squirrel cage fan out of uh, out of an old uh, tabletop fan and it works don't get me wrong but it's not the airflow that the greenhouse needs to completely circulate the air through it and warm the whole greenhouse up thoroughly so you can see uh, water water retains its heat a lot longer than air and uh, it's a much more uh, stable source of heat if you will and uh, that's kind of the concept I'd play here uh, I don't know if it'd ever be good enough that I could uh, disconnect the uh, the uh, forced air end of things but this water here would be the primary source of heat this 3 8 tubing I have here sorry quarter inch tubing um, is all I have in the shop of this size uh, once again I'm, I'm not going to town but I will if I need to I have some quarter inch here uh, but very restrictive um, worst case scenario I could hook the quarter or sorry the quarter to the one-eighth and uh, it would it would provide restriction but it would definitely increase the heat because it would increase the time in the surface area of the copper inside the uh, burn chamber there so I will uh, try not to babble on too much longer here and we'll uh, we'll get some updates for you here as we go we're just gonna do a makeshift job on this here nothing fancy there'll be some tape involved I'm sure handyman secret weapon and uh, we'll see if we can get the uh, the blower hooked to the uh, to the radiator there and putting the copper coil in is just a matter of a couple of holes through the side and uh, we'll just probably rob some hoses that are already out there just to get the system up and see how it works okay I'll all right quick shot here before I put this thing together here uh, you see the handyman secret weapon there that's uh, paying the bills now so uh, found a box that the fan fits in real snug and uh, just kind of cut away what uh, wasn't needed there and I'll just slide this into there uh, I left the original part of the corners of the box as legs to give it a bit more rigidity and I'll tape her up there so she doesn't uh, move around uh, this fan has a temperature dial setting I've got it set at the uh, lowest temperature which means the fan will cut in uh, and then on the back here I have this switch here which actually turn the turn it on or off so uh, all right and here's our finished uh, blower unit here just uh, dual fan window fan blowing through a uh, old radiator sealed all up not bad airflow the fan isn't real powerhouse but uh, I think it'll help circulate so we're gonna run our hot water in there let it drip out there back into the pail I'm gonna go get the uh, copper uh, heat exchanger in and we'll get some lines run get some water in there get the fire going and we'll see what kind of performance this thing brings us good day good day uh, we have got uh, our system installed here I had to do a little bit of shitting around I guess uh, not realizing my uh, pond pump was weak I actually had to pull my barrel up I had it down on the floor there uh, I was having some flow issues but uh, here it is um, got my uh, 
my uh, two fan or my window fan I guess you'd call it boxed up to the back of this old radiator and uh, you can hear that fans just powering up now it's a little bit slow to get going uh, what I have is uh, hot water coming in through the bottom here and uh, working its way around four quadrants and out this line back up into the pail here you can see I don't have much flow there it's just a trickle there's a pond pump in the pail and the hoses both go outside there um, I'll just give you some shots on some temperatures here we've got uh, about 58 about 60 degrees there and the outlet side is about 30-ish uh, water sitting at 37 we also have that heat duct in the back there that's uh, bringing in heat with the with the air to air exchanger and it's driven off of this makeshift fan here which goes out pushes into the cold air and uh, turns around and comes right back in through that warm pipe. I'll take you out and show you the fire and, and the heat exchangers. Uh, we've come up two degrees since I started filming here. We'll check on that when we get back in. It's a beautiful snowy day. So, here our uh, cold water comes from our pump through this line into a heat exchanger that's in the flue then it comes back out into another one of windings comes back out there and back into the greenhouse uh, that's uh, quarter inch copper on both and they're just uh, this one here is just a flat coil that one there is wound around a pipe uh, cold air return is right here comes up into uh, five pipes that go along here right through and into the back and they come out the same way back into the greenhouse uh, the door you can see the huge fire we have <laughs> doesn't take a hell of a lot of heat I don't know if you'll see those copper coils up there yeah there they are and you won't see the other ones are up in the chimney. Ooh, that's a little warm on the camera. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at here. Uh, we're just trying to extract as much heat out of this barrel here as we can. And we're trying to get the, uh, the spikes out of the greenhouse temperature. And with just air, the spikes seem to be more erratic. And that's why I'm using more water. Um, I decided to use both of those heating coils. Uh, the first one was just to warm water in a 45 gallon drum in here. And the second coil was just for this system I just installed, but I decided I'll uh, for now run it through both exchangers and I'm getting pretty decent temperature on here. Uh, it's almost burn your fingers temperature, not quite, I wouldn't say. I and mean, you've seen the fire in there, so we're sitting at about 66, 67 degrees. I'm going to shoot the inside of this pipe here. It's about uh, 80 to 90 degrees. It's actually pretty warm. So anyway, that's how it's, uh, that's how it's working. This seems to be a very, uh, the, the, the water heat with the radiant heat from the water is, seems to be very effective um, we're still at 22 here and I gotta remember that uh, it's daylight out right now and the greenhouse will retain a certain amount of temperature check this one here it's about uh, 17 degrees in here and this one here is saying about 15 degrees so that's kind of the idea or kind of what I'm up to today here, if anyone has any questions or whatever, go ahead and uh, shoot and I'll see if I can uh, maybe help you out. Thanks for watching.